How did you decide to go from a monolithic architecture to microservices? What were the key things that you had to consider? It actually ended up being like a numbers game for us. It was the number of developers that we had, the number of releases that we were looking at, and really the number of times that we released things that we really didn't want to be releasing. So, you know, if we were trying to release a certain piece of functionality, but we always had to, you know, deploy additional things with it, we saw a lot of coupling there. We really kind of wanted to move more to an independent model where we could deploy the assets, you know, completely independently, have separate release cycles, and, and really move a lot, more, a lot faster than we were before. Uh, does a move toward microservices require a shift in culture as well? Yeah, actually, um, that's one of the big things is uh, kind of shifting from this more uh, uh, governance model where you have one thing that you're managing, one thing that you're operating, and shifting over towards these uh, independent processes, the independent releases, uh, independent testing, and then also definitely the independent operations. So, you know, there's a, there's a mindset that's needed, whether it's a, a shift in mindset or something you already have, uh, it is really dependent on the organization, but for us, you know, it really was a shift in mindset. And so does that cultural change have to happen before the actual integration, or can they happen in parallel? I think it's kind of a, a back and forth. I think it's kind of like a, 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 a testing out the waters. You, you, mm -hmm. you deploy a, 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 an initial uh, microservice, you know, kind of try to figure out how to operate it, try to figure out how the teams work, and then once you get the success on that, then you start to scale it out. So. The way that we approached it was more of that iterative model where we kind of test the waters and then, and then learn from our mistakes and then and move on. Uh, someone related to that, is it possible to evolve into microservices while still continuing to roll out new features? Or do you have to just right. put everything on pause and, and move into a different infrastructure? Well, I think any time that you're trying to, to do uh, new feature development and uh, continue with, with existing uh, features at the same time, you're going to have a little bit of rework, a little bit of duplicate effort. Um, there's, a, there's a practice um, where you can actually build micro services within a monolith and that's actually a good way to start um, if you're actually working with uh, an existing system and you want to try out something new you know kind of figure out where your boundaries are figure out um, what are some of the practices you want to do and you could do that in tandem with the work that you're already doing uh, and then once you feel comfortable with the patterns you can actually start to pull that out um, if you have a little bit more bandwidth and a little bit more capability you can actually do duplicate work create a greenfield application and still maintain uh, the stack at the same time. Uh, so there's different ways to do it. Um, you know, I, I would definitely you know, recommend people you know, trying out both methodologies, see which one works for, for that particular organization. Is the reality, though, that there probably is going to be some duplicati duplicative work? In I, I think always there is. Um, and actually, one of the things with, with microservices is the idea of replacement. So um, you know, you, you'll continuously have uh, that older version, that older thing, and you have to figure out a point where you're going to stop maintaining that. Uh, and with microservices, we talk about actually, you know, instead of trying to maintain versions and, and create new versions of the same application, just create a new application for it uh, and roll that out. So even within the microservices, not just shifting from monolith to microservices, but, but within mi microservices, you're also going to have a little bit of that duplicate work as well. Okay. Uh, what was the biggest issue you encountered with Home Depot.com moving to microservices? You know, it's funny because I, I think it kind of relates to that first question about the um, the culture shift. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, organizations that 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 start with a monolith or, or grew into a monolith, they, they developed this, this model of, you know, a single thing that they're working with. And, you know, we wanted to move towards more of the uh, microservices model. So we had to shift our thinking around it. We had to uh, work with our teams to really understand how to test, how to operate, uh, develop, and deploy all these things separately. Uh, similar to that is we had a, a growth spurt at the same time, bringing in new people that had new ideas. So. Uh, you know, different ways to do things. And with microservices, you really do support that independent model. That in so one team can do one pattern, one team can do another pattern. Uh, and so from a centralized governance standpoint, we're trying to release ourselves from having to dictate exactly how things are working. And I think with the microservices, uh, it, it allows people to kind of try things out. Uh, and back to that um, uh, replaceability thing, we get to do a lot more prototyping and try systems out a little bit more. And so that was that was one of the benefits that we got out of it. Uh, but the challenge is really how did we get there originally? And, and that kind of ties back to that culture shift that we talked about. Last question for you. Mm -hmm. What people or projects are you following these days? You know, uh, Spinnaker is one that's been coming up a lot in the office. Um, I think it fills a gap in the industry that, that um, has been there um, with release management. How do we actually do deployments and, and continuous development or continuous deployment? Uh, but aside of that, uh, some of the stuff that's on, on the horizon are the serverless technologies. I mean, there's a lot of talk in this conference about reactive architectures, and, and I think the idea of, of serverless really kind of fits into that model a lot. 
it really takes the, the conversations we had about IaaS. Um, you know, we started with VMs, we moved to IaaS, uh, the PaaS model came up. And, and even with the PaaS model, we're still talking about, you know, having to scale workers and understand a little bit more of the infrastructure than we need to. And I think with, with the serverless technologies, that's really something that's, that's going to take over. And it's really going to change the way we think and we architect our solutions. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Great. Well, thank you for being with us. Great. Thanks.